going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gus, and I'm back in the physics classroom. And today we are back with where we started. We started this unit with a ramp uh, that came down, it curved, it flattened out, and it launched off the table and hit the ground. We started here, and I challenged us to go ahead and, and determine where if two cars collide down here as one car comes down the ramp to predict, to calculate where it was going to land off of the ground. Happy Tuesday. Thank you, Mira, for writing that up there. Uh, and we failed. We failed miserably. And we failed because we had this notion that kinetic energy was conserved uh, I'm sorry, mechanical energy was conserved from top of the ramp to bottom of the ramp, and then kinetic energy was conserved in this collision. We said there's no outside forces when the two cars collide, so mechanical energy must be conserved. And we were wrong about that. Energy is conserved in a collision. However, it's not mechanical energy. There is thermal, there is sound energy, and we hear it when two cars collide. So we've spent some time now studying collisions and studying what is conserved in the two-car system during the collision, and that is momentum. So we're going to revisit this problem and try to see if we can improve our answer from before. So first things first, let's draw a model of our problem. We have the ramp. The ramp, let's uh, simplify it where it comes down and it curves and flattens out and then the table starts. And so we have one car at the top of the table, we have one car at the bottom of the table and we're going to have, let's label these points A, we'll label the curve B right before collision C, after D, and we'll label the ground over here, we'll label that E. And we ask ourselves, what are some tools we can use? What's going to happen here as this object goes down the ramp? We said before, nothing wrong with our physics as it goes down the ramp. So from A to B, conservation of mechanical energy. From B to C, conservation of kinetic energy. So from A to B, we said we could use conservation of energy or mechanical energy. A to C, we had conservation of mechanical energy. And that looked like UG at A is going to be equal to the kinetic energy at C. No problem. And we had no problem really with kinematics after the collision. So from D to E, no problem after the collision using kinematics. Our problem came from C to D in the collision. What we've learned now is that in collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved, but momentum is. So, if you're not sure about what I'm talking about, go back and watch the previous video. It's actually hard to see. I'm riding behind the board over there. Yeah, now it's glary. You can kind of uh, see it. Momentum is conserved. If you're not sure about uh, what I'm talking about, go back and watch the very first video, Intro to Collisions and Momentum, uh, because now we're back here trying to wrap this thing up with our understanding. So, in order for us to solve this, we need some measurements. So, let's go take our measurements with our meter sticks to go up uh, to figure this out and start plugging in some numbers. Now, this time around, I'm not going to solve this through with you. I'm just going to give you the tools to solve this. So first things first, I start this thing from the bottom of the ramp to the top, and I add meter stick is upside down. I get 41 centimeters. So from here to here, I see a change in y of 0.41 meters and then from the tabletop to the ground I get 91 just like I did before 91.91 meters these are the only two measurements that I really need other than the mass of the two cars which I'll go grab for you right now I need to make sure that they have tape on it so that they stick let's see what we have back here Thirty-two grams and twenty-seven grams. We'll say this car up here is thirty-two grams, and this is twenty-seven grams. These are my two cars and their masses. Now, the only thing I need to really think about is the conserved momentum. And when I think about the conserved momentum, we can call this car A. We can call this car B. The momentum of A. Weird interruption. Uh, where was I? We were talking about momentum and the area in which this uh, momentum is conserved, the area that we had a hang up on last time we tried this problem. So we said the, uh, the real hang up was at C to D. This collision here, we thought energy was conserved and it wasn't. 
So if we look back here, and we say, okay, if we call this A and we call this B, the momentum of A is the momentum of the two-car system. And we're using the two-car system because this way the forces that are interacting in the collision are considered internal to my system instead of being external forces on each object. Now, will car B experience a force? Yeah, it's going to feel a force from car A. It's going to speed car B up. Will car A feel a force to slow down? Yeah, it's going to feel a force from B back on itself. That's our third law pair. It's going to slow itself down. Both objects individually experience a force. Both objects experience an impulse in the collision. When I put both objects in my system during the collision, they do not experience an external outside net force that acts on the both of them. So I can say that the momentum of the two car system is conserved. And that's what I say. I say, okay, initially momentum is all stored in A. I can say that there's momentum in B, but that's just zero and this is initially. After the collision, there is momentum in A and there's momentum in B. And because this is an inelastic collision where both objects stick, I'm not going to write it this way. I'm going to write it as the momentum of the A plus B object stuck together. They're not two objects. They're one object stuck together by tape. So this is how I'm going to write this. And then what I want to do is start to add my variables to this problem. I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to say that there's the mass of A times the velocity of A. Now, is this initial velocity of A at the beginning of the problem? Let's look back. When am I using conservation of momentum? I'm using it from C to D. So no, it's not zero. I'm not talking about up here. I'm talking about right here, right before the collision happens. I'm talking about point C. So I want the velocity of A. I can even say at point C. V, A, and C, that's a lot of variables, but I'm being descriptive with my variables so I know where this uh, is specifically taking place. We said there's no momentum in B to begin with, and that makes sense. It's at rest at the edge of the table. This is going to be equal to the mass of car A plus the mass of car B as they are stuck together after this inelastic or perfectly inelastic collision times the velocity of A and B after the collision. We can call this the velocity at point D. Again, I'm being descriptive with my variables here. This velocity at point D is important because this velocity is what I need to find in order to go ahead and do my kinematics from D to E. I am not solving this problem for you. I have given you the numbers. We've gone through a solution for this problem in an earlier video. You go ahead and if you need to review the earlier video, review how we solved a to B and D to E. We just talked about solving from C to D, now using our new physics tool that is the conservation of momentum of the two car system. When I go ahead and do this, I am much, 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 much closer to the expected horizontal range on the floor than I was last time. Last time I think we were somewhere around 80% error. Yikes! This time, we're much closer. We're within 5% error, and that might be due to the, the friction within the car and the bumps along the way of the track. Okay? So, this is a more typical physics problem where I've got energy and, uh, and a collision. I've got conservation of mechanical energy and a collision where I'm using conservation of momentum and kinematics. This is a lot of pieces put together, but this is what's going to happen for us as we move through the rest of this year. If you have questions, drop it in the comments, send me an email, or ask me in class. Until next time, see ya!